To help uh, practitioners who are time poor and just don't have enough time to read research, I'm going to continue on by summarising some papers that have recently come out. And this one I'm going to summarise is looking at loading to minimise injury risk and to enhance performance. And it basically tries to answer the questions of how much, how fast and how soon. Now most of us know that in order for us to improve our athlete's capacity, we need to load slightly greater than that athlete's current capacity. But if we throw excessive loads at our athletes, if we try and uh, ramp up their loads too quickly, then it increases the risk of injury. And what we also know is that it increases the risk of underperformance. So what I'd like to do is present three main concepts here. The first is the concept of the floor, the second is ceiling, and the third is time. Now, when I talk about the floor, I'm talking about the athlete's current capacity. So it could be their sport-specific capacity, or it could be their local tissue capacity. When I'm talking about the ceiling, I'm talking about the capacity that's required as when they have to compete as part of their sport. And then the third concept we need to consider is time. How much time do we have to get that athlete from the floor to the ceiling and get them there in one piece? Now, if we have enough time, we can get our athlete from the floor to the ceiling and we can get them there safely. But typically in sport and in rehab programs, we never have enough time. Um, so let's present a couple of different scenarios here. The first is that the, the floor is identical, the ceiling's identical, but the amount of time that we've got is reduced. Now an example of this could be if we have an athlete in rehab and the coach wants that athlete back quickly. Or if we're returning from off-season break and we just have a very short pre-season to get our athletes prepared. Now in this example, the slope of the line between the floor and the ceiling is much steeper so it increases our athlete's risk of injury and it increases their risk of being unable to perform when we get them to the ceiling. A second negative scenario is when our athletes come back from off season poorly deconditioned or they've been in rehab and they haven't undergone enough loading while they've been injured. Now in this case, the floor looks more like the basement. The, the capacity of our athlete has dropped so far down that it's a long way back to the ceiling. Now, when we have that scenario, the slope of the line is also very steep. So it increases our risk of injury and it increases the risk of underperformance. But there are positive scenarios. There's ways that we can solve this. And I think the best way that we can solve this is through raising the floor. And what I mean here is we want to try and load and load early. So if we have a, an athlete in off-season, we want to try and maintain loading throughout the off-season period. If we have an athlete who's injured in rehab, then we want to keep their load ticking over. We don't want their capacity to fall to the basement. Now when we're able to raise the floor like this, it bridges the gap between the floor and the ceiling. It makes it easier for our athletes to get to the ceiling. We don't need as much time to get to the ceiling. Um, and that, that gentle slope of the line means that we reduce the injury risk and when our athletes get to the ceiling, they're able to perform and perform at a very high standard. Now, there's different tools that we can use as sports medicine, performance and coaching staff to simulate what floor we should aim for when we're bringing our athlete back from off-season, what a realistic target load is whether we need to start preparing earlier, and how this impacts on our weekly load. Now I'm going to show you one of the tools that we've developed to help our, our coaches and our performance and medical staff work together to plan out athletes' training loads. What we have here is a training load simulator. Let's imagine our athletes are performing eight two-hour sessions in a week which equates to around about 1,000 minutes of training load. And it's a two-week pre-season. And in that pre-season, we have to take them from eight sessions per week up to 16 sessions per week. Now, when we train like that, 
when we go from 1,000 minutes to 2,000 minutes, that's a 41% increase in training load per week. But we can modify or manipulate the floor, time, or the ceiling to get a better result for our athletes. So let's say that we want to keep the ceiling the same, but we want to modify the floor. Let's say we want to raise their training load by 20%. Just add an extra one or two sessions. We've gone from 1,000 minutes up to 1,200 minutes. Just by changing the floor, our change in training load from week to week goes from 41% down to 29%. Equally, if we asked our athletes to load a little earlier, let's say rather than making it a two-week preseason, we asked them to start loading within their off-season around about two weeks earlier. So now we've artificially increased the length of the preseason from two weeks to four weeks. By doing that, that change in training load per week has gone from 41% down to 14%. So you can see, just through raising the floor, we've bridged the gap between the floor and the ceiling. We've made it a, a much more gentle progression from the floor to the ceiling. We've made it easier for our athletes to get to the ceiling. So they're much more likely to get to competition safely. And when they get there, they're much more able to compete at a high level. So as a summary slide, there's five key ways that you can ensure your athletes are prepared for competition. The first is we want to try and maintain an adequate training load during the off-season period and while our athletes are injured. Don't let your athlete's floor fall to the basement. We need to identify the ceiling for your sport. So understand, understand the, the sporting demands, whether it be baseball or basketball or football or soccer, understand what your sport requires. Assess the individual differences in training tolerance in your athletes. So it may be that your weaker or less fit athletes or those who have um, sustained multiple injuries previously, they may require slower ramping of their training loads, but stronger and fitter athletes and those that don't have a long injury history should be able to ramp up a lot quicker. Identify the most demanding passage of play and make sure your athletes are prepared for it. If you only train for the average demands, then it's highly likely you'll be underprepared for the most demanding passages of play. And finally, consider the amount of time that you will need to progress your athletes from the floor to the ceiling and to get them there in one piece. And you can do this as a, as a performance and sports medicine team, working with your coaches to ensure that when your athletes get to the ceiling, they get there safely and they're prepared for the competition demands. Thanks again for listening. If you enjoyed uh, this summary of this research, uh, feel free to leave a comment below or if you'd like a copy of the paper, visit us at gabbitperformance.com.